yes, the rate is a little bit higher, but I look for if it's if the property is bringing me profit, uh, I'm gonna buy it. Uh, yeah. Generally speaking, the properties it's a upward curve. You know, it keeps going up. Uh, I've uh, been in real estate for 20 plus years, and I haven't gotten anything wrong with it. Uh, so I, I've made money every time I bought a house. Uh, so overall, yes, keep buying. Welcome to the Home Buying Podcast with Marat from The Lending Group. Agents, grab insights from top industry leaders, explore best practices, and redefine success. Stay ahead, stay informed, and take your real estate career to the next level with Marat. Now let's get started. Hey guys, um, welcome to the Home Journey Podcast and the Home Buying Podcast. I have Alex Shozenko with me, um, awesome agent here locally in Bucks County, Montgomery County, Pennsylvania in general, and New Jersey. And today we wanted just to chat with Alex. Um, you know, he's got a couple interesting things that that he's done over the past in his life. Um you know, some of them relate to uh, uh, investments and uh, veteran affairs. So a lot of interesting things. So I wanted to introduce Alex. Um, Alex, how are you, man? Thanks I'm doing well. Me. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me on your podcast. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So Alex, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get here? What was like, how did you become an agent? What 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 brings you here? Sure. So my, my story of becoming an agent is, uh, I mean, it's not that interesting, but I think it it deserves a um, kind of, um, it deserves a voice. And, and the reason is because when I, I, so I served in the military, I served three and a half years active duty as a combat engineer. And um, when I got home, um, I wanted to buy a house. So I knew I wanted to buy a house when I joined the military, you know, uh, just so I can have a house. But um, when I started looking for an agent to represent me, um, I asked that agent, I said, uh, hey, you know, what do you think about the VA benefits that you know I got from the military? And he said, oh, you don't need to use them. You know, um, it's, it's really, um, um, it's going to be really hard. Uh, the VA is very strict. You're not going to be able to buy a house using VA benefits. And I thought it was a little peculiar um, because, you know, in the military, you know, you hear, hey, you can use your VA benefits. And and now this guy is telling me the opposite, uh, or at least, you know, he's discouraging me to do it. So I kind of <clears throat> I set it aside and I did buy a house using a, a, a different type of loan, FHA loan with a three and a half percent down. But it kind of set in the back of my mind. And so I'm like, why did he do that? You know, why did he did not want me to use the VA benefits? And I think that kind of in the retrospect, I think he just didn't know anything about it. Uh, he didn't, he wasn't doing enough, maybe transactions to know about it. Uh, so I got my license. Um, I, the, the kind of the purchase process really kind of caught my curiosity and uh, I got my license and I started practicing real estate in mind that veterans would be on foremost of my um, business. And so what I did was uh, I paired up with, you know, several networks that represent veterans and that refer veterans specifically. And I made it my niche uh, to help out veterans. Uh, my motto is I serve those who served. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I've helped at this point, probably hundreds and hundreds of veterans to buy houses. Uh, so I have a vast network of veterans. Um, I still keep in touch with many of them. Um, and, you know, it's not all I do, but I want to say that this is kind of the niche that I have uh, uh, carved for myself uh, because I want to serve those who serve. You know, I, I want to encourage them to use those benefits. And honestly, um, just the way that I've been practicing real estate, I think I can, uh, I have a certain, um, how do I say it? probably uh um I, I can probably get you into a house a lot better than any other agent can just because i am a veteran and i've been helping veterans i know these kind of niches that i can do with a va loan that i don't see a lot of people do and so using those things i'm able to buy uh to help buyers uh, va buyers buy a house 
Okay, makes sense. I think it's definitely an underserved market uh, for sure. And, and also to your point, I think both um, agents and, and lenders have a tendency to shy away from the VA uh, loan or, or VA uh, buyer because, and not so much because of uh, the difficulty, but I think it's more of the uh, the unknown, right? I right. think that that's really where where the uh, I guess the pitfall is. So, you know, if you can give us a little bit of an idea of of what is the process with a VA uh, transaction or VA purchase, how does it differentiate with conventional and you know, um, and in today's market, how can someone take advantage of of a VA product? This could be an entire section, an entire podcast that we can do uh, sure. about that. But uh, to give you kind of a quick rundown, um, it's not that much difference. It's just the way that you present an offer. Uh, obviously, you know, there's 100% uh, financing that is uh, that you can get through using uh, a VA offer or <laughs> VA loan. Um, there are certain things that, that are a little bit more stringent, like uh, a, an appraisal criteria <laughs> is a little bit more stringent. But honestly, it's not that different for an FHA loan, you know, and you know, they, they look for the same things. They look for the uh, safety items. They look for peel paint. They look for railing, you know, that's missing. Things like that, electrical uh, faults. But, um, you know, it's it's it, it's also finding out, you know, something about the buy, the seller, for example. I've had transactions where uh, a, a Marine sold to another Marine. Uh, I've had transactions where a Navy veteran bought from a an Air Force vet. And... They did not have the best offer. It was the way that it was presented. It was the way that, you know, the whole approach of the offer, uh, the communication with an agent, making sure that the agent relays that information. Obviously, you can't control that aspect. But um, I think that if you relay the information in a proper way, uh, you'll have a better chance overall. Um, okay. So if you have a VA client, right, and, and you're looking for properties, do you take a different approach? Or are you looking for possible like, properties? So it really depends on the buyer. Uh -huh. uh, how much how much uh, money does the buyer have? Are they able to cover their closing costs? Uh -huh. um, most of the time, if the buyer is not able to cover their closing costs, and in this market, it's tough. You simply look for a property that has been sitting on the market for about 20 plus days. It's very simple, actually. Uh, you make sure that you don't go for those houses that have been just came on the market which have, you know, three, four, five offers on them. You simply go for the houses that, you know, have been sitting on the market a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. This is one well, of the things. You know, there's, there's others, but. Right. That makes sense. So, um, you know, in your opinion, uh, if I'm a vet, I know a lot of times, uh, you know, vets get moved around a lot, just like it's part of the process, I guess. Or, or maybe they're still in active duty. They don't have to be vets to use their. Uh, VA bed. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I, I do a lot of relocations too. I've had clients from uh, Hawaii by here. I have clients from Alaska by here, and they were relocating. They were either ETSing, PCSing, basically changing their duty station, or um, you know they were just finishing with the military and just you know coming to their home base. Makes sense. So if if you're if I'm a vet or if I'm uh, currently uh, on duty still, and I'm moving into the Pennsylvania, New Jersey area, would you recommend to use your benefits? Would you recommend to rent? What would, what would you recommend? And, and uh, it really depends on, on, on the buyer. Uh, I'd have to, you know, have a consultation with them. Uh, in order for me to help somebody, I need to know more information about them. Okay. Uh, I can't be guessing, you know, so I need to find out what their situation is. Uh, I need to find out if they have any savings, if, if they're able to purchase, uh, if, if they're pre-approved, you know, that's an obvious one, right? Right. Um, so if they can get a pre-approval, sure, we can do it. If, if they can get a pre-approval for whatever reason, the credit is bad. Because uh, actually coming out of the military as, as a soldier, if you only served a few years, your credit may not be as good. So you may need a little bit of time. Also, veterans that have not been using the VA benefits that have been, uh, you know, have served a long time ago, and are now just trying to shop, their credit may be shot. So it really depends. There's so many things, and I have to find out exactly what that uh, buyer's or renter um, situation is in order to help them. Okay. Consultation is a key. Awesome. So start 
you, you figure start start with the consultation like almost like a, a doctor or an attorney. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, how can I help somebody if if yeah. they're not giving me any information? So for sure. Yeah, for sure. And I know, you know, just you know, you and I have known each other for a long time. So I know that aside from uh, from being an agent, you're also a real estate investor and have a portfolio right. of rental properties. Um you know, not just in Pennsylvania or New Jersey, but but some part other parts of the country as well. Um, yeah. What are you, what are your thoughts about purchasing investment properties now? Um, mm -hmm. You know, does it matter where you buy? Um, how do you analyze those? What do you recommend when? It's when interesting. I, I just had that conversation with a client who wants to uh, do an investment property. She's like, is this, is this a good time? And I said, yes, I I still buy properties. Okay. Uh, yes, the rate is a little bit higher, but I look for if it's if the property is bringing me profit, uh, I'm gonna buy it. Uh, okay. Generally speaking, the properties it's a upward curve. You know, it keeps going up. Uh, I've uh, been in real estate for 20 plus years, and I haven't gotten anything wrong with it. Uh, so I I've made money every time I bought a house. Uh, so overall, yes, keep buying. Um, it really depends on, you know, your down payment. If you're able to do a good down payment, yes, it's a good idea. If you're going to finance, you know, 100% property and not going to live in it or rent it, it maybe not so much. You have to have a little bit of down payment in it. And plus, buying as an investment property, you're going to have to have 20%. Uh, actually, interesting thing, a benefit of a uh, VA loan, you're going to uh, on a uh, investment property. But if you live in it, if it's a, a um, owner-occupant, you can still finance 100% of that property. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So if I'm a hot, and you, maybe you know even better than I do, if I'm a vet and I, let's say, or maybe I'm not a vet or I'm in active duty and I you know, lived in Pennsylvania and I got a VA loan and then I'm, I have to be relocated to Wisconsin or Ohio, I could rent the existing property in Pennsylvania, yes. correct? And then Absolutely. possibly use my existing uh, if there's any VA benefits left to buy another property in Wisconsin or, you know, the state I'm being relocated. Correct. So actually it's not known to too many people. Uh, some of the VA lenders use it, but there's a se second tier benefit that you can use with a VA right. loan. Yes. Uh, and that just says that, look, you have this chunk of money, which is, um, it, it depends on the state. Uh, and so let's say, let's use a number of, let's say 550. It's, it's more than that, but let's just use 550. Uh, if you only use 200K out of that 550, you still have 350 left, okay? Uh, so you can use that 350 as a second tier benefit. So if you bought a house for $200,000, which in this case is not realistic, but you know, back back in the day, you'd be able to buy a house. Like that. <laughs> now it's like, yeah. But, uh, so you can use that second tier benefit somewhere else. And there's things that will qualify you, for example, relocating to another state. Um, you know, uh, changing duty station. So yes, it will allow you to buy that second property. You'll still rent the first property, but you can use your second tier benefits to buy your uh, your second property. Awesome, makes sense. And um, if we went back a little bit uh, to the investment question, um, so what do you look for? You said if I'm profitable, right? What, what's yeah. the threshold? Is it a dollar, a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars? Is it a in, in my you... case? Yeah, in my case, it's dollars. Okay. Uh, it's not necessarily percentage based. So I look for cash flow. Okay. If I can get a minimum of five hundred dollar cash flow out of the property, okay, I, I usually buy it. Okay, and and most of the time, and even with today with today's rates, most of the time that does require at least a twenty or twenty five percent down payment. Right, and, right. and really, the program since two thousand eight, from financing standpoint, have been structured in a way because the risk is higher on investment property, the down payment is higher yeah. as well. I okay. mean that that's why like a, a VA loan would be very beneficial, uh, where you can finance a hundred percent of it live in let's say a duplex and half of it and then rent the other yeah so in in a va you could have um a duplex i think triplex or a quad and still get high uh, so that is the max yep. yeah i i've uh, helped clients buy triplexes they lived in one and then they moved off and then bought another house and then they rent the triplex yeah yeah so unlike conventional or fha products when you start moving up into the multifamily situation you need to put more and more money down on the VA product, 
you can get a tri or a, a quad and still have 100 percent finance so it's, a, it's, an, it's an excellent process yeah. um all right awesome alex tell us a little bit about what areas do you cover what you know what markets do you serve sure i serve um locally here uh so bucks county montgomery county uh delaware county um i some i've actually ventured into i own a couple of properties in uh pocono so i service poconos okay. uh, so all your vacation rentals or just vacation homes um i cover central and south jersey i have a team in new jersey and i uh i i do not service uh north jersey but my teammate does so he actually covers the north jersey and we um kind of do business back and forth if he can cover the south jersey he'll you know uh refer to me and then vice versa so um, I cover most of the, my team covers most of the jersey. That's awesome, man. So it's hot topic today and has been for a little bit. And you just touched on it as vacation rentals. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing in the Pocono market? How's the Airbnb? I know there was an article out not that long ago that said, you know, Airbnb uh, income has been dropping off. Airbnb, the corporation came out and, and said, that's not the case. We're still seeing good growth. What, what yeah, so doing? it really depends on the township. It, it's just so many factors. So uh, one of the factors is, uh, did the particular township that you're buying the property and pass the certain ordinances, which uh, make it very difficult to do uh, short-term rentals. So number one, if, um, if in, in my opinion, you can still be profitable in the short-term rental market. So that's kind of to, uh, a general answer to that. But uh, you have to look at the townships, uh, which have more strict ordinances, perhaps stay away from those. Um, also communities, communities have their own rules as well. If you're buying in a community that's strict, you're probably gonna have less profit overall. Uh, if you buy in a single family home uh, that is not in that community, you can still rent it out. And if the township doesn't have anything to say about it, or they don't have any ordinance, you can, um, you can probably be more profitable than uh, a township that does and a community that does. Awesome. Makes sense. How, how did you get into the Poconos? Is it like the, the, the I just, life, fishing? What's well, the hobby? Yeah, I, love, I love fishing. <laughs> I love fishing. So yeah, uh, I've been going there for, uh, for a while yeah. and, uh, you know, just uh, family wise, we thought maybe a rent, a, a vacation home would be great, but then we uh, kind of got into the um, whole short-term rental market. And so we do, I, I, I rent short-term and long-term. So I have properties that do both. Awesome. So do you go there winter and summer? You, I, I, know, I know you hurt your knee this year. <laughs> so skiing yeah. may be a little bit less of a... Uh, well, this year, listen, I'll recover and still go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> so you get my to wife, ski. My and... wife doesn't, but I, I, I will. <laughs> So Pocono is good for skiing and fishing, some of your hobbies, yeah? Yeah, yeah, love love both, actually. Okay, I hope awesome. to return next year for skiing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the recovery period for... Uh, what, you ACL? Have an ACL? Yeah, have an ACL. Uh, yeah, so it's a reconstruction ACL and the meniscus tear. Uh, oh. So it's it's about a year. Uh, they don't recommend uh, doing any, any uh, stringent physical activities like that uh, for about a year. Nine months minimum, yeah. So that puts you into this season or next season? Um, I, I'd probably wait one season. One, one year. Okay. Yeah, so I got to get my legs back up into the shape that they were in. <laughs> so only only sledding for you this year. Uh, yeah, tubing. <laughs> tubing and snowmobiling, which is also available in the Pocos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, what about, you know, if, if I, if I uh, wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about uh, I guess more of a, uh, the local market. You and I both live in Bucks County, um, Pennsylvania. What are you seeing in our our market now, Bucks Montgomery County? Is it tougher to get a loan? Um, you know, rates have been taken up. Um, what's the inventory like? Um, is it still a seller's market? What do you see? How tough is it to get a get a property? Right. It. it I think it depends on the neighborhood. Uh, I think there are some still high demand neighborhoods. Um, uh, you know, your, um, well, let me see, uh, anything that's like central box school district, anything that's, um, council rock school district is going to be in demand. Uh, some of the other ones, see people are moving out of the Philadelphia still, uh, I think younger family families that just, you know, got married and are having kids, they still are looking for those better school districts. 
Right. Um, the other alternative is to simply uh, get your child into a uh, uh, private school. That's one of the uh, other alternatives. But um, here in, in this area where I live and where you live, uh, it's still pretty uh, pretty competitive. If a good house comes on the market, there are multiple offers on it. Um, and houses that have been sitting just need a little bit of work. And if a family is not um, opposed to um, giving a little bit of TLC to the house, they can still you know, buy a house at a maybe a slight discount. Again, this is if you're targeting houses that have been sitting on the market for a little bit and not going after those houses that just came on the market and you know has a, have been sitting for five days where there's most of the competition happens, you know, that first yeah, week. For sure. And to your point, they're all uh, conventional VA and FHA loans do offer a product that allows some uh, construction or rehab to an existing home as long as it appraises. So even a VA loan does have uh you can purchase a house that's you know maybe worth 250 but or let's just be more realistic that's worth 450 <laughs> but uh you know selling at a slight discount then you can utilize maybe 20 thirty thousand in construction or renovation money um and the same holds true with fha and conventional financing yeah you have to own the land in order to build uh with a va uh on the land you can't uh, uh rent it out so like if, if it's rented, you can't, you have to own it. Got it. Okay. That's makes the only sense. requirement really, but yes, you're right. All right. Awesome. Makes sense. So, um, you know, considering we're, we're kind of targeting uh, or, or our audience base is, is really home, future home buyers, I guess. What, what's like one or two really important pieces of information that you would share um, as an agent with 20 plus years of experience, but also as a, as a, investor and uh, sure. uh, what, what would you share? What would you give them as a little bit of a nugget? Sort of speak? savings, savings definitely helps. Uh, you are a, a better, uh, stronger buyer if you have savings for sure. Uh, it doesn't mean that you, you know, you, it's not, it's not it doesn't mean that you're not going to buy a home. It just means that you're a stronger buyer. Okay. So uh, savings is definitely number one, in my opinion, uh, a good credit history. Definitely. Uh, so that, that would be the second one. Um, Third um, would be kind of be open-minded a little bit uh, because if, because it really depends on the family, you know, how much, how much money they have, what, what are they able to afford? What kind of pre-approval? So, you know, depend on what range you target in, uh, it depends what strategy you use. And I have to tailor it to each one, you know, each family, each individual who buys a house and each property that you're, you know, kind of going after. All right. Makes sense. And I guess also one thing I didn't touch on is what are your thoughts on inspection versus no inspection? I know that this is also a hot topic. I think I all will, the country. Right. So I will never ask my clients to waive inspections. Okay. Ever. I will have, I will tell them that it's an option for you to waive inspections. Is it a good idea to waive inspections? No, it's not. How much do you want to buy the house? How much do you really like it? Uh, in that case, in that regard, you are able to waive the inspection. Just had a client reach out to me. She waived inspections and she found mold after. She waived the right to do the inspections, but it wasn't also disclosed on a seller's disclosure. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question to answer, but I will never ask my clients to waive inspection. I'll always, uh, I'll always propose it as an option. Um, and obviously there, for me, in order to keep myself safe, I have to have my clients sign waivers that they don't want inspections. I want them to get inspections. It kept, keeps me safe as an agent because I don't want to get sued after, you know, uh, and I want my clients to really buy a quality house. So will I ask them to waive it? No. Uh, do they have an option? Always. Got it. All right. Makes sense. And then uh, if they do decide to waive inspection, have you seen that, you know, the, you can get offers accepted with an inspection just for informational purposes where yeah, it's not it, a contingency? It's, yeah, it's uh, kind of levels of, um, you know, contingencies, right? Yeah. So uh, the the easiest level for the seller, hey, no inspections. <laughs> That's great. The seller loves it. Yeah. Um, second tier will probably be inspection for informational purposes only. Uh, third tier would be, you know, your one inspection, then it's two inspections, three inspections. Um, one of the things that is required for VA loan, or actually 
in in this area it's two. Uh, if if the house has a septic system, sorry, if the house has a well system that you have to test for portability. If the house uh, and also the another um, uh, required inspection is a termite inspection. So that's a kind of requirement for your VA loan. Uh, termite inspection and your uh, well. If the property has a septic, uh, it's not required in Pennsylvania. In other states, it is required. It's more like a state law, uh, but here it, it's not. Got it. Okay, makes sense. Anything else that you could recommend a buyer? You know, so we talked a little bit about VA loans and and VA financing, uh, short term rentals. Go ahead. Sorry. Sure. So overall, it's a great idea to buy a house. Uh, I have never gone wrong with uh, with with real estate. Uh, it's a great investment, um, long term investment. It's not a you know short term. Hey, I'll buy a house, you know, for one year and make money on it. No, it's not going to happen. Um, so yeah, overall, good good idea, great idea. Um, and I I encourage people to buy homes, not because I'm I do real estate and I you know I'm a buyer agent or seller agent because I think it's a great idea. Yeah, and you own property as well. And I think that's a, a big point that sometimes people miss. It's not buying real estate, you know, there's crazy news cycles all the time, right? You know, we talk about rates and whatever, where the market is going. But the, the purchase of the re, of, of a property shouldn't be looked at as the next news cycle. It, it can be a 10, 15, 20, 30 year, um, I guess, transaction, because that's what you should look at. Uh, as a pers perspective buyer, at least in my opinion, um, at the property that way, you don't just own it for one year or one month or two months. You're going right. to own it, and it, it and it's also a great way to to build generational wealth. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Um, you know, both you and I weren't born here, right? We we immigrated, and um, you know, I think both of us are trying to build some generational wealth for our kids. And from my experience, and I don't know if correct me if I'm wrong, having that property and and passing that down to our kids is a great way uh, for them for, for that generation wealth to be transferred forward. Like I'll I'll give you an example. I know, you know, um, my parents-in-law were able to uh, like when, when my wife and I got married, and then my my sister-in-law, brother-in-law got married. They had a property that they owned, and we all lived there. And that was like a great way. Like, hey, we got married and we needed a place to live. We're young. We're just starting a family. Yeah. They were able to provide, like we paid rent, but hey, we paid rent to the family, so to speak. All right. And that property is now paid off and, and, it's, and it's generating income. And I think people, whether you're in your 20s, your 30s, or even in your 40s, need to look at it that way. Because if you go back to, I don't know, when there's horses and, 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 and buggies and people, you know, put, put a flag on the piece of land. And that was their like way of, of uh, purchasing property in the, in the West. Uh, and then their families were able to, to generate a, a lot of wealth and, you know, and you can use the equity of the property to buy additional rental properties and so on and so on. And it really starts building on itself. Would you Correct. say generational wealth is definitely, um, uh, very achievable through uh, a, a purchase of homes, purchase of land. Um, land appreciates in value, generally speaking. Uh, it, it doesn't fluctuate in price as much. Um, yeah, I mean, there's have been many famous people that have, you know, have said purchase land. And yeah. there's only so much of it. <laughs> very true. I, I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, oh, man. Uh, Mark, Mark Twain, I think. I think it was Mark Twain who said that. Maybe you're you're probably right. I don't know that much. We, we could fact check you. Fact check you later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Put a little but... sign on the bottom, like Mark Twain. <laughs> <Close>. <laughs> All right, man. Well, listen. How do we get a hold of you? Um, you know, for our viewers or listeners here, what? How do we get a hold of you? Give us some some uh, some shameless plugs. <laughs> right, sure. So you can go to alexcellspa.com. Uh, that's one of my website and alpha cells uh, So those are the two sites that will take you to my contact information. You can search uh, properties on, on, on my website. Um, you can call my number 267-738-0886. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I am on uh, Instagram. Um, have yet to get a Twitter account. But <laughs> X, it's X now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. 
All right, man. Awesome. Well, thanks for being here. Really appreciate the knowledge. Yeah. Uh, um, and, you know, as always, look forward to working with you, brother. Same here. Same here. All right, man. Take it easy. You too. Bye. That's a wrap for today's Home Buying Podcast with Marat from The Lending Group. Real estate agents keep thriving and stay ahead with expert guidance from Marat. Join us again next time and together, let's build a successful real estate future.